qua dentro grosso Materazzi non lo stanno marcando Cannavaro anche è uscito Close che era il marcatore di Cannavaro palla tagliata messa fuori c'è Pirlo 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 ancora Pirlo di Tecco tiro go! Yo, what is up you guys? This is Godson and welcome back to Clash Royale, you dudes. I'm going to be going over some of the replays that I've done so far. Uh, this is uh, pre-recorded, so I'm going to go ahead and try to explain some of the stuff that I've noticed uh, with the deck that I've been using because I will be in King's Cup and I want to try and come up with a composition that helps me at least, <laughs> at least defend at least defend myself because if I go there and I don't even get one win then I'll be crushed. So I'm going to try in this video and explain why I feel this composition will really work for me and hopefully uh, give you guys some pointers as well that maybe you could use this and uh, implement this into your own gameplay style. Oh dang, kind of loud. So yes, uh, as you can see I mentioned this in the last video that I'm going to be going with the three musketeers. Um, I just feel this card is so good. You can split them up, and, and um, that by doing that, that makes the opponent have to multitask his attack. Multitask his defense. And so I feel I have a deck. I don't know. I just created this deck. I don't think... Uh, I haven't seen anyone using this deck, so... I've kind of centered it around being good in all situations. Gotcha. Uh, and I think, really, the core of this attack of this deck is the Skeleton Horde, the Giant, and the Three Musketeers. Those three cards right there are like the meat and potatoes of this deck. And so they're good in all situations. And as you can see right there, the Three Musketeers were deployed in the back. I've just noticed that when playing the game, I know that uh, whenever they touch your tower, whenever they're attacking your tower, there's always a need to just hurry and get them off of your tower but sometimes in this case uh, as you can see now I have a really good counter push going and I don't have to force <laughs> my deck to stop them from attacking my tower so just letting them attack your tower just enough so that you can build the um, the momentum that you need to get to their tower I feel is a good is a good thing and you I, I guess you can you could say that you could just gain that over experience playing enough so that you know that okay don't attack just let them have it and that way you can actually get more damage off of them by setting up so this guy is pretty hurting right now I took out a tower he's got his hog and look at this check this out I put the skeleton horde and then the hog rider doesn't even touch the tower that's how good the skeleton horde is they attack so fast they do so much damage if you could get them out there fast enough so that um, you can take out the troop before they have that zap built up, you're good to go. And even with the zap, I've noticed that uh, they don't hit all of the skeletons. You have to be really accurate with hitting all of the skeletons with the zap. And so the guy was not able to hit all of my skeletons, and some of them were able to uh, get onto the other, other side, and I think you can actually use that as a countermeasure against the attacker. If you have a miner, which I do, hitting the tower before they, uh, their tower can take out all of your skeletons would be good for a counter push. So, I don't know. This deck is just so good. I'm just It's in all situations. Oh, man. The giant's going for it. He's going to one-shot it. <laughs> He's doing everything he can to get it off. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Giant took it out. That is a three crown win. And you guys, I'm still pushing my way up to the top. I'm trying to get to the 4K range. I've gotten like to 39. <laughs> I should have ended it, the series right there. I got to 3,900 cups, and then I was like, oh, man, not 400, not 4K yet. I wanted to keep going, but I think that's like the highest I can get. It's super hard to get up there. Uh, so as you can see, we're going up against another dude, and he has the Prince combo, it looks like. Uh, now the Prince combo, you know, the thing about the Prince combo is in the early game, in the early uh, stages of the game, it seems the Prince combo was so powerful. Uh, you have a Prince that could do massive damage and then another Dark Prince that could do splash damage. So it was like a match made in heaven, but all of a sudden, I don't know, I, I, I don't see too many people using it and I think it's because maybe just the combo by themselves is just not good enough. So I don't know. Maybe uh, I've I've actually seen one of my uh, 
clan members use a golem with the combo. So that did work. So I don't think the team is dead, but I just don't see people using them. I don't see people using them. Uh, but I do know they are used with uh, meat shield combos. Really good if you have a meat shield with that. And I think actually a, a Pekka with Freeze and two Princes was pretty, pretty dang strong. So the match is starting off kind of slow. We're just testing the waters, feeling each other out. Uh, he did take a lot of damage off my tower, but I have. Oh, waited for that. Look at that. See, that was that was clutch. I did not, I did not put <laughs> my goblins right there for him to take it out. Took him out, and now I do the counter push. Look at it, just melt that tower with the uh, the three musketeers. And I, that's another thing I've noticed. Knowing when to put your musketeers in the front line, when to be aggressive and when to be defensive with the musketeers has been really working out. I I don't know, this is just my opinion, but I think the three musketeers are like in the top five cards in the game. I would say the top five, in my opinion, because just because you can split them up, they could do s serious damage. They're, uh, Yay. they're shooters. Uh, they can take a fireball and still have some uh, health points left over to attack. And then for counter pushing, it's just so much. And and on top of that, uh, you can put them in the middle of the enemy's field and they won't be attacked unless they cross a certain uh, radius. So it's like, it's so much that I'm doing with this card that I feel like I can really use this in the King's Cup tournament. All right. So that's another tower. Now all I have to do is just defend. I just have to <laughs> push really hard. I was really sloppy right here defending, but somehow I was able to uh, clutch it out and keep them off of my king's tower. Oh! Yay. All right. So just a few more seconds, 10 seconds left almost, and that should that should guarantee me the victory. Oh, Hog Rider, don't do it. Don't do it. Wait, Hog Rider, time's up. <laughs> okay, you guys. Uh, so that was the second replay that I took over. Let's go to the next one here. Oh man, you guys. It's crazy. It's crazy. So this was the last one. Um, and was this guy, I think this was another three crown that I did on this guy. Um, and I never do this with, uh, I can never hope for this with uh, the low costing elixir teams. Oh, and this, this is the team that I've been having such hard, really hard trouble with. The Lava Hound teams. Uh, so for some reason, I was able to get this guy, and I think it's just because I know when, as soon as they put that card down, you have to counter him on the other side. Don't fight this guy head on, you have to go on the other side as soon as he puts it down and force him to put his cards on that side. Because if he's able to build up and to um, assist his Lava Hound with taking out your, your tower, it's going to be trouble for you. So I've learned... Don't even fight him. Just go that way. <laughs> Just go counter him. And I think that's the best way to do it. Uh, but of course, if he has an Inferno Tower or a Bomb Tower, that could be a problem for you. So luckily, he didn't have that. He has a cannon, but my goblins were able to shank that thing off. And now we're going for the King's Tower. And I figured, you know what? Since he has that Lava Hound, I might as well just go for the King's Tower. Why not? You know? His whole composition relies on a big push with his meat shield to get to my tower. So you know what? I'm just going to keep pushing on the other side. So that's what I do. I try and uh, take out his second tower just to confirm that, hey, okay, I want to guarantee you this victory. I want to take out the second tower before I go for that king's tower. He's building up now. So, okay, I have a choice to either fight him or keep going for the king's tower. So I said, no, I'm going for the king's tower. I'm not letting this guy build up because I know that's what he's trying to do. Uh, and had my goblins assist my giant, pushing my way, and that's something I never do. But I know, I know his team composition. I know his deck relies on a big push, so I have to just counter it with my own push. So he can't build up. And there it is, you guys. I was able to convincingly take that win, but not easy. And uh, you guys, that is my deck so far that I could possibly be using for the Kings uh, tournament. Let me know what you guys think in the comment box. Thank you for watching. This is Godson, and I will see you next time. Godson out.